Right. Hello, everybody, and welcome to uh, Matt's Chats. This is, in fact, the, the first one that we've done, um, first one that I've done. Uh, and I'm very, very lucky to have a very, very special guest today, the first person, the, the virgin, if you like, of this wonderful experience. And I'm talking to virgins. I mean, Madonna had that very famous in bed with Madonna. Uh, you've got in bed with Matthew because uh, that's where I'm right now. I'm in my bedroom, my cell block here behind me, as you can see, with the, the walls. And I'm here talking to what who I think is possibly the nicest man that I've ever met in, in rock and roll. And uh, I, I think he needs no introduction, but I'm going to give it anyway. Uh, I'm just basically going to say hello to Lee Mark Jones. Hello, Matt. How are you doing? You all right? Really, really well. I'm really chilled out. I'm really relaxed. That's what I kind of do is relax. I want to try and get a side of you that perhaps um, other people don't know or haven't, haven't seen before because, I mean, you've been oh. at this a very long time. Yeah, well, I don't think many have seen the new side of me for the last sort of two years, because before when I drank, I was a twat. There was a there was a window of um, I was like quite hilarious for like a couple of hours, but a twat for the majority of the rest of them. That's been all my um, life. And seriously, you've done well. Yeah, you know, so, yeah, no, it had to end. So once I, I decided to come back into the rock and roll business after doing a degree in drama um i just thought let's do it properly so you know and i knocked it on the head for various reasons i mean fucking hell being caught by your kids um with the fourth bottle that you've hidden of red wine that's nearly gone is not good not good so that was it it was just like so i knocked it on the head and i thought like let's let's do it if i'm coming back i'm gonna do it properly so we got a freaking great band together we've only been together 10 months this lineup well, I mean, you know, that I already know. I mean, very kindly, you 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 let my band uh, come out and support you uh, on two of your oh. dates, but it, it wasn't just that. It was how tight, how good the band is. You know, I mean, right the way through, um, Peter and uh, and your drama and Kerry. I mean, it, it's just it's just a really really tight outfit. But do you know what it does? And I think what 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 is really good is it 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 kind of energizes you. Uh, and yes, yes, I agree. and what was interesting. From my perspective, to see you at the start when we we saw you in in um in uh, Milton Keynes, and then we saw you yeah. again in in Kidderminster. But just to see you on stage at Hard Rock Hell and that triumphant moment, and just to see the audience, wow. it was it was a yeah. wonderful thing to witness. Actually, I, I was very very yeah. I was moved by. It. I was actually went back and when we got back to the band, I just said, "God, he must be so happy." I said, "He actually tore it up." The band were amazing. Oh, no, thank you, mate. But you you know what it's like. It's the same with you. I mean, I think your band is a cracking band, original band. You know what I mean? But you've had to almost come out from the, oh, they're a covers band, they're a pub band, they're this. We we had to sort of fight, fight it. It's like, what are you? What sort of stuff do you do? Mm. We don't get it. What's with the face makeup? What's you, you know what I mean? And it takes a while to get into people's brains what it's about. You know, I always thought it was great to be a unique original band. But the further you go, people are like, nah, I mean, we couldn't get radio play. Mm. We were too, we weren't, we weren't rocky enough for the rock shows, apparently they said. And uh, we were too punky. Um, and we're not Latin enough to go on anything else like that. And we're not poppy enough. And it was like, so I'm like, well, and they're like, so we don't know where to put you. And I thought, well, that's good, isn't it? You know, something different. Is that not good? And it's like, apparently, it takes a long while to sort of convince people as to what you did. The only rule that we had when I got this band together, like the present lineup, and, and this is the lineup now. I mean, it was, I didn't want, well, it was funny because we had a discussion with Dave Draper, um, who produces us. He does all the Wild Heart stuff and he's brilliant. Yeah. And uh, he knows Kerry. And he said, no, I'm not freaking, I'm not producing, I'm not producing Gypsy Pistoleros. It's, it's fucking cock rock. I don't do cock rock. And um, so we had to convince him. And once he heard it, he said, like, no, it's great. It's like nothing. It's like different. It's got elements of everything. And that's what we wanted. I mean, we got Pete. I didn't want an archetypal rock guitarist. You, you know what I mean? You know, not, not that I'm knocking anybody, but I wanted it to be a bit like Frascati off from the Chilies. So, and Pete was a Met led when he was a kid. And mm -hmm. for the last... 10, 12 years, he's, he plays jazz. He's, he's got a lovely style, lots of arpeggio, really, oh, really good. Gosh, yeah. yeah, I mean, he's all over the place. He can, and he plays classical and he plays, so he's not essentially a rock guitarist. So we had to, but we created a bit of a monster though now, because now he's got his three amps, 
with his <laughs> rigs all linked in and it's like distortions all over the place so yeah Guitar, it's, say, cool. <laughs> yeah but it's but it's different and that's just just adds it i mean kerry and craig had been in, as a rhythm section for years before you know in, in like in like a little you know covers band doing mm-hmm. stuff you know like uh functions sort of do so they were tight as hell anyway and together it just like it just works and i don't know what we are i think we're more punky than rock I don't know. I, I mean, there's the Latin element. But you know, it's interesting, it. just as I say, to see with, with a crowd and, and to watch them and watch the way that you engage. I mean, you're a great front man anyway. You've got a great persona, the way you come across and, and you can see the theatrical side of you. And, you know, I've always been in the belief when I go and see bands, I like to see that. I like to see a kind of creative front man. I like to see someone who engages with an audience. And you do that. You do that. And what I really like about the way the band operates, the way all around you, they all know their roles. And, and Kerry's so happy. She's jumping around, you know. And, and, and yeah. it's a real tour de force, and force, tour de force, that's, that's us a lot, tour de force. <laughs> and um, and Pete, as you say, it's great. He comes on and you have that little intro a bit where he begins it and it, and it and it builds up. And I like that. It's it's a very unique thing you've got going on there. And I was watching an interview with John Cleese, fun enough, um, yesterday, to, to the Python thing, saying that nobody could understand what they could pigeonhole, what they were doing. And they just yeah. said, oh, 13 episodes. And that, that, that led to what it did. And I think... Yeah nowadays everyone is scared everyone is scared everyone, no one knows what to say because there's so many people there's so many chiefs as they go further up the line yeah. nobody likes to make that stand but you know was it david roth said you know tell someone what it's they like and then tell them again you know and that's it yeah, and, you, yeah, yeah. And, and you do that yeah well you'd say oh, you've said you play you played with us and you saw those that was a tough slog that uk tour it was like some big, big places to very few people. Mm-hmm. And I knew it was going to be that way because unless you've got a big name, well, even the big name bands aren't pulling at some places and you've had tours pulled and we were, and we went out during that period where it wasn't sure, you know, the heating shit had just come in. So no one yeah. got money, et cetera. And so God bless them. The, the promoters still stuck with it and put us on. And I mean, we played, I mean, we played Queens Hall, which holds near 500 to, I think it was 22 people you know so yeah. it was and we, and we just decided then sod it no we need to be tight and you know gig tight is different to rehearsing it rehearsing it and so the stage sort of show developed as well because i mean like i just used to be a pisshead i didn't even know what i did on stage it used to be mad but i had to sort of relearn that again you, you know what i mean like with a live audience and you do sometimes and and i think the great thing about hard rock hell was We'd done Sleaze about three, four months before, mm. and it was a totally different animal that we were. It was a totally different, same band, but same personnel, but we were totally different. We just went for the throat. And I think just sometimes you've got to, you go for it and go, fuck yeah, here we are. Have it, fucking hate it, love it, this is it. You know, and you just got to nail it. Nail your heart to that freaking post and go, well, we either do it or we don't, you know. It's too easy to be safe. Do you know, it's, it's so good to hear you say that. I, I do that. And I think I think an audience w- will relate to that. And the number of comments about you after you played uh, on various websites and social media said exactly that. Oh, they're my new favourite band. And, and that must... I yeah. mean, oh. if, if you go back to, to when you first started, and you started very young, I think you started when you were about 15, yeah. and, you, and you started yeah. and you went out, and you've toured... Yeah. With some of the biggest bands in the world you've gone out and you've done that and you've yeah. seen the way they perform yeah. you see the way they've yeah. done an audience yes. but it all stores in there it's all in there and you could see that, that you've learned from every front man every performer that you have and yeah. i think the theatrical side of you i think all of that is coming to a point and i think what a great thing to say you know when you've been in the industry so long that you're reaching probably your your finest moment now oh god yeah and i think that was it i mean I remember, I remember like when we were supporting the Ramones, that was in 1993 mm-hmm. and we toured with them. And I just remember thinking all the, all of the bands, all the intricate, you know, like complex um, guitar parts, whatever. I thought, I know every freaking Ramones song that they're playing. I know every hook. And I just, that, and a lot of that I took and I, I started off in punk bands. And I started off with that simple thing. And we've gone yeah. back almost. Pete's as, as musical as you can get. And so is Craig and Carrie, really. But I'm just going back with, I just want to write hooks, simple things that people can remember. I mean, I, you're the same. You know, I used to write really complex pieces of beautiful poetry. And people would go, 
yeah. it can. Yeah. But it's but it's, yeah, but it's a chilling yeah. piece. It's lovely prose. It's unless like yeah, can't help it, can I? You know what I mean? You're like, <laughs> yeah, yeah, um, mate. You come up with a good whoa whoa, and they're in. There. Yeah, and they're they're right <laughs> down the front, and they. Yeah, well, yeah. that's what we were laughing about the other day when we we played and we played in our set. It was the we went on there and we knew the cut were coming on. All girl band, you know, within three songs in, you know, we we knew all the all the reviewers going to go next door, start their breasts off. They went and great, and they were lovely oh. the cut and they're great bands. And yeah, uh, yeah, yeah, they were. Actually, one of the uh, the reviews I've seen today said exactly that. I, I stayed for ransom. I stayed for three songs, but then the all girl band was on, so I thought I'd go next door. <laughs> oh, <laughs> and no. then laugh. No, no. You know, no, but, but that's it. But, but if you think yeah. back, I mean, you think back, and, and it's interesting because I met uh, Paul Cook of the Sex Pistols yeah. and they were, they were heroes oh, really? And I met him at yeah. the Massive Wagons gig on, on um, Sunday. I was chatting to him and, and a really nice guy. And I was yeah. saying, you know, you, you changed my life. I, I was really into, you know, like, you know, I wasn't sure where I was, I was lost. And I, I happened to be home one day and I switched over the TV and I caught the end of that Grundy show. And it changed oh, my life. It, it just seemed these yeah. guys that didn't give a flying fuck. And it was like... Wow. And I told him, I said, you have no idea. It was suddenly I had a reason, you know, I wanted to play one string guitar. I wanted to do something. I just had a, yeah, a way of yeah. creating. And I think art as a reaction, whether it's art, whether it's poetry, whether it's art, if, if you can feel through your soul, everything going with it, then you're there. Yeah. Oh, God. I'm, I'm a, yeah, totally. I mean, punk did it for us. We, we used to go to a, an Irish club. It was basically a youth centre almost. And we were let Andre's drinking. We're about 14, 15. <laughs> and they started putting it was the only place you could put punk bands on and the punk band started to play there and we were all down there and some were great some were shite and we thought dude we can do this and so we did in those days it was brilliant the punk explosion there must have been so many people that never ever thought of being musicians one mm. couldn't afford instruments one didn't even know how to start sure but sure. it was like you know there you go four chords form a band and it was <laughs> like Right now, <laughs> yeah, and I, yeah. Well, I, I use seven now for my songs. <laughs> <laughs> Pete, Pete tarts them all up, mate. You only, only need like seven yeah. flamenco. That's the flamenco seven chords. I stay out of it now. Um, I let Dave and Zach do. It. I just, I just write the words. <laughs> I just write the words. I don't know. <laughs> no, no, but um, no, but it's that's how I got into it, and it was just like that. I remember, like for the first two years of going, like, yeah, it's all right, Lee, but. But you're singing too much. Can you shout a bit more? <laughs> <laughs> it's like, it's like, yeah, I'll try. But uh, but that's how I got into it. And it was like the early years. Then we all went into post punk bands. We all wanted to be Echo and the Bunny Men and Bauhaus. Oh. And uh, and we we supported. We, I was in Michael Cry the Innocent. We supported Theatre of Hate, who were then Spirit Destiny. They turned into Bauhaus. We did as well. And so that was that was good. That good sort of days then. And that but that's where all my roots are. I was not really into rock and I've never really been into the classic rock, which is funny because they always leave us out of all the new wave of classic rock. <laughs> Anything. And it's like, yeah, because we're not. We ne I never was. <laughs> you know, I couldn't even, even if they included us in it, I'd have to go, hey, hold on, mate. Well, we always saw ourselves as the, the classic unsigned natural talent. <laughs> as in cunts. <laughs> as into the, all these little acronyms they came out with, but we, it, did, it did make me laugh because they are they are very much like these days, and they try and pigeonhole you. And you know, I mean, I'm not going to go into the the politics of Planet Rock or anything like that, but that yeah. of, of what of what it is. But I think the unique bands, the, the more bands you see that go out there and defy that and say, "Well, I don't care. I, I want to play this. I don't. I don't want to be labelled. I just want to play. I just want to enjoy it, have fun, and connect with an audience." And and do it. And I was going back to as an actor when you when you were younger and you learned. I read somewhere. I don't know if I would agree. You were were you schooled by Peter O'Toole? Did Peter O'Toole? Yes. Uh, is that my right? First, my first acting lesson ever. Um, really? Because Trudy Trudy Styler was my my nan's goddaughter. Right. And she ended up going out with Peter O'Toole. And uh, for some reason, I went to London on my first trips there. And um, she was like, I had nowhere to stay. So in mm. desperation, I sort of like got in touch and I ended up there and she had to go out or whatever. And there was Peter O'Toole there. And it was when he did his um, Bernard Jeffries is unwell or something, his theatre show on his sure. own. Yeah. And because um, I didn't really know him. And he, and he said, and he was going. I bet you love that. Come, <laughs> well, let's, let's read this, read this for me. And so my first part of reading any script was with Peter O'Toole 
reading like alongside him and two wow. or whatever. I mean, so what, that was fucking amazing. Mad. But um, I, I, I do have a Peter O'Toole story myself, actually. I used to live in Richmond in Surrey, yeah, yeah. very near Twickenham Rugby Ground. And um, I used to have this place called the pub called the Roebuck. You sit on the hill where I used to go out and sit and look out and, you know, I'd, I'd write songs. It's, 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 a, it's, a, it's a very famous painting that Turner and everyone have done. There's a pub called yeah. the Roebuck there and it overlooks, you can see Twickenham Rugby Ground. Now, England were playing Ireland uh, at Twickenham wow. one day and I went to the Roebuck and there was Peter O'Toole and Richard Harris sitting at the bar. Wow. This was at 11 o'clock in the morning. The game, I think, was about 3, 3.30. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They had tickets for the game. They were still there at 5, 5 o'clock. They, yeah. didn't, they didn't even watch the game. They were just swapping yeah. anecdotes and telling stories. And I sat there watching it. And I just it was, I was mesmerised by it. It was incredible. Yeah, yeah. Oh, no, they were, that was of a different era, wasn't it? But, but, I mean, like, when we were, when we were touring, I'm like, when I started, like, when, when I sort of went out, I went out to Spain, Spain. We did like, we became like the glam punky era in London during yeah. the late 80s, 89s. I remember and, it, yeah. yeah. And we'd done, we were, I was in a man called White Trash uh, then and we supported Lords of the New Church and then we went on to support Kill City Dragons and then it was sort of dying that scene because I couldn't believe Kill City Dragons didn't get signed because I thought they were a fantastic band. Mm -hmm. And I, yeah. I know Billy and I know him to this day and I still think they're fun. They were great. They should have really, really, you know, been a massive band. And so they were. So I moved to Spain with my girlfriend at the time, and um, that's when she knew a promoter. We got a band together, and of course, Spain was a bit behind. <laughs> so we were all right. We'd walked into the early early eighties, <laughs> <laughs> and it was like so. We had like all the hair up and all the glam stuff on, so they loved it. And we toured with a half English, half Spanish band, and we did. The weird, our new promoter we got to know called Robert Mills, who's still a big promoter, one of the biggest yeah. in Spain. And we, and it was like, Robert, whoever you've got coming through will support. And he's like, all right. So we did Nazareth, UFO, Magnum, um, <laughs> Sepultura. Sepultura was funny. God, they hated us. That <laughs> crowd. Because we used to play Anarchy in the UK. It was the only song that went down half decently with the Sepultura crowd. It was like wiping the makeup off as we we're on. It was like, oh, not a good idea, boys. Um, we did Sabbath, we did Dio, um, but UFO was funny. Uh, we did Ramones and we did Motorhead because I've toured with Motorhead twice. Um, and that's how we sort of, like you say, that's how you learn from, and that's when you look at them, you think, yeah, I thought, well, UFO, yeah, I don't know much, many of their songs because I wasn't mm. into rock. And I thought, yeah, you know, what are they known for, whatever. And then they played Doctor Doctor and freaking now the crowd just went, and then you're going, oh yeah, oh that's a classic song, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> they, um, Iron, Iron Maiden use that um, use that now as their uh, before they come. So all the fans know when Iron Maiden are coming on because they play Doctor yeah, Doctor. Yeah. But uh, yeah. yeah, I know. I mean, I know Lawrence Archer who played with UFO for for a while. Um, I used to rehearse. Oh, in I e know Lawrence. Uh, yeah, I know Lawrence as well. Yeah. Yeah, he's a good lad. I used, yeah, I used yeah. to rehearse in Easy Heart Studios where all the bands uh, used to rehearse next door. You'd have Motorhead and, and they come in and buy and Lemmy would come in and go. Oh, I think I need some sugar or something. You think, oh, I, oh my yeah. God, that's lemon. And you, you try and be cool, but you, you always lose it, you know. Oh, I, I yeah. Well, I, I knew met Lemmy when I was about fifteen down the San Moritz, like years before anything, and we'd known him and like we toured with him. He was a nice guy. He was like, that's when they say, that's when you know Matt, same as me. When you meet bands that think they're something special, yeah, and you're like, and, totally, and you're like, you haven't done anything. I should, know, I should let you, I should let you know, Lee, that your uh, your thing is you frozen back. there. You're back because on. It freezes. It and it had that kind it of just, Thunderbirds feel, you know, like with, it, just goes, it just goes. It just goes. God, you bore the shit out of me. I'm just going to freeze you. <laughs> yeah. yeah uh, goes but, like, but all the really big, big, massive stars, like you know, from Lemmy to Axel to like all of them that I've met, apart from Nicky Six, who was right up himself, um, are, are, are like cool. And that's how they stay that that yeah. way. I think it's just the wannabes and the you know like the people have got a, a bit of a not a chip, just almost like a, a, a some sort of inferiority complex or whatever that are like you know that talk shit to you. you know, yeah, so. well, you get a lot of that. I, I, I don't. I'm not a big fan. I, I'm always trying to be the positive. I always have a positive thing to it. I've met a lot of people through the years who look down and nose. I mean, I got it the other day. Uh, HRH oh. a little bit, and I got it. Yeah, at really. Yeah. And and you look at it, and you think, okay, you know, whatever. You just say, fine. It's 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 down to you. But 
as you say, I've met I've met some very famous people all the way from the Dalai Lama down to yeah. you know Michael Caine to to anyone, and yeah. I find exactly the same thing. These these yeah. people are just they have a, a a presence. They know who they are. They're not yeah. insecure. They're, they're not. But but you have that, Lee. If I, if I may say, that, you have that about you. You've been around. You're you're a star. You're bigger than you probably think you are. Uh, you are, wow. and you're gonna your stock level is gonna go since HOH is gonna go up and up and up because no, you were, for a lot of people the band that were talking about Skid Row oh, when you. you came in. So I'm not oh, just thank you for that. Not at all. No, I, I, but it's funny because you've seen the struggles along the way. Yeah. You know, but I thought you had a cracking set there, dude. You went down great. I mean, remember, you're trying to change people, not change people's perceptions. Yeah. But, but go like, it's a no, tough part. It, 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 it yeah. I mean, I did. Yeah. We, we basically, I wrote, um, you know, trying to get them for Planet Rock. I, I don't want to go over oh, sort of the same old ground, but they said, you know, you sound like a pub band. I thought that was just an easy, an easy kind of like, yeah, of course it is, because that's where you play, but that's where all the, the great bands play. But yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. 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 This is not about well, that's, me. <laughs> no, that's like great. That's like great praise, though, really, isn't it? That's yeah. That's where we all come from, isn't it? It's about any audience. But, so when I say that now, and you know, I always oh, do that. Oh, you're not entertained. But, uh, yeah, but yeah. It, but, but it's, so where did the flamenco, know, like, the flamenco idea come from? That kind of. Um, it's like, but I just 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 on that last thing in HRH, you know, I couldn't believe there were a few bands there that couldn't be asked to go to the merch stands to sign stuff for people yeah yeah and i was thinking why do you why do you want to be in a band you, you, you know i mean the money can't be freaking hundreds of thousands playing that you know what i mean are you still doing it just for a couple yeah. of grand yeah, no, but, no, absolutely yeah. but you hate each other and you don't really want to be here just fuck off do something else yeah, dude <laughs> you know why what <laughs> anyway but i mean we loved it we that's the first time we've been, it was about an hour we were doing a sign-in for the merch after, which we couldn't believe. And we were just so freaking thankful. And people are like going, oh, I can't believe you've taken the time. And it's like, dude, not cliche. Without you, we ain't, we're not doing bugger all. You know, it's only people. Great attitude. And, and I've got to get one of your jackets, by the way, because I promised Selena that oh, I'd wear God. one. And I said, yeah, yeah, yeah I've got mate. one. I've got one. I've got to get one. I better, I better get one of those. <laughs> yeah, mate. Oh, God. That, those were like, geez. I mean, we wanted to do some really nice merch, but it costs so freaking much. We make hardly bugger all on it. Yeah. And it's like, but, oh, hey, ho, that's by the way. Oh, the Flamenco bit started in Spain when I moved back, moved over to Spain in, in, uh, I thought so. 18, yeah. 1990. Mm. We used to, um, it's funny because we were, man, they were mental, the Spanish. Absolutely mental. We thought we were bad. They were just, <laughs> off, off their heads but we used to rehearse in everybody in Tharagotha where I lived used to rehearse in the desert just outside town and they used to call them the locales and they were like little rehearsal studios uh -huh. about 50 of them and we couldn't believe it so and some people used to just stay there they used to get so wankered that they just used to sleep there used to whatever you know some anyway there was a flamenco band called Katama that were in um, one of the rehearsal studios. And when they were drunk, they'd come over and we'd go over and see them. And we played like a flamenco version, totally pissed out of our heads of uh, Anakin in the UK. Okay. And I thought, and I thought, shit, it really sounds good, that flamenco guitar, you know, rocked up. And um, and a mate of ours also, was, there was a really big band in Spain, uh, in Latin America called Heroes del Silencio. They were from Tharagotha as well. And they were quite into us because we were the English band that came over. And um, I remember them, they said to us, um, Juan, who I knew, the guitarist, he said, oh, come and see our band. We're playing at the stadium next week. And I went, oh, right. I thought, like, you know, the function room off it. And we went there. No, it was the stadium. <laughs> they <laughs> played the bloody stadium. And we're like, oh, oh they, are quite, they are quite big, aren't they? <laughs> but, but he used to come in and sit in on it. And, and I sort of went through some rocky things with him and he and he was into flamenco and he played like, it's not really flamenco, it's like rumba, more or less. It's like cheesy, sort of, it was big in Tharagotha in the 70s, rumba pop and all that sort of, um, and they sort of, not rock it up, but pop up sort of flamenco riffs and the rumba style. And so we did this. And then when we were, we were playing the Ramones, um, I went, hey, dude, why don't we do... Um, rip off that one from that one rumba song and put it in the set and all the spanish kids in the band went no dude 
they'll murder us, but you can't <laughs> do it. So I went, all right, we'll do it then. So we did it and it and it was just stunned silence at first. Then a load of like the gypsies in the audience started double clapping to it. And then the rest joined in and it like, so it went down all right. And I left that idea back there after that tour about 1994. But when I came back, I thought like, no, I, I, I really was into that stuff and it was different. And so I sort of brought it back or oh, when the Pistoleros got together in about 2005, the first incarnation, when we were all sort of, uh, when we wanted to be LA Guns and we toured with LA Guns and Pussycat and all that lot. And and like and all the Americans used to come up to us at the Rock for, Rocklahoma. We played five years running a massive festival in the states with with everyone, crew, Guns and Roses, Doc, and you name a glam hair band, they were all there. Yeah. And, uh, so we played. No, oh, we played with all of them. And um, you've gone all furry uh, again, just to so you know, oh, you've sorry. got that kind of that kind of look of a, uh, you know, bewilderment. Oh. Here you go. And, <sighs> and uh, wonderful. And they used to come up to us and go like, hey, man, I remember you in the 80s. You were great. You were fucking, I'm going to do, we weren't fucking there in the 80s. <laughs> <laughs> we're there, mate. But thank yeah. you. We're such a cliche. We're such a walking cliche of LA guns. Thanks, dude. <laughs> oh, no. I, I, I said, I've, I've lived through that era. I've seen them all. It's funny. I, when when um, uh, Spike turned up the other day, I said, I said, the last time I saw you was in 1995. In the, he said, don't remind me. I went, okay, we'll leave it there. But that's uh, exactly it I mean, over the years. But look, is there one thing out there that people don't know about you that you'd like to get out? One thing that you think, okay, you know, this is this is Lee Mark Jones on Matt Chats, which is what we are, or Matt's Chats, or yeah. whatever you want to say. Just one thing you'd like to get out there. Um, oh, fucking massive ADHD, Ed. Really? And it was funny. It was funny because in the early days, we used to be speed freaks as well. <laughs> And that just levels you off if you've got ADHD. So everybody else is whizzing their tits off. And I'm thinking, oh, I feel all right. <laughs> I feel normal now. And then and at the end, the end of the night, everybody's freaking passed out. I'd be all, up there going, well, this is fun, isn't it? No, no. One to, no one to play with anymore. You know, so, but it's great. I mean, I suppose that's what I don't miss so much the drinking now. It is, it's great. It's great to remember gigs. I mean, I didn't rem I didn't know. I looked at my old my old tour dates popped up because we're back as an active band now, apparently. Yeah, so you're it's active. Yeah. It's come back up. And um I I'd forgot we played Switzerland. Uh I'd forgot we played Budapest. Uh, but I did remember a really bad story about Budapest um after that. But you just forget, and I forgot years of my life from just being a piss. I mean, we didn't just used to drink. We used to drink to oblivion, you know. It's, it's, was... been, it's been to feel like an AA meeting now. I'll tell you something. I'll, I'll sit there, <laughs> yeah. Like the Sopranos, I'll sit here. You come talk to me. I, I do. I think you're very they brave. They keep pulling me in. They keep pulling yeah. me back. <laughs> I was told I couldn't, I couldn't use the C word. Oh, we're running out of time. Look at that. Listen, they, they, they do that thing as you're running out of time. You get the upgrade comes on. <laughs> I'm frozen again, mate. Look, it's gone. I fucking had enough of you. Yeah, I had enough of you, Lee. I think we might have to. We might have to call it a day there. I think it's had enough of us. Yeah, I think it's decided. Oh, okay. It's no, mate. Attempt. I mean, like, no. I mean, you are. You're a lovely man, and it's no, been a pleasure. Me. Seriously, and I, I mean, I we'll, think we'll, any... we'll be friends. You know, we'll see each other in the rock and roll circus. You know we that, will. and we I will. and I wish nothing but the best for Ransom because you will do a hell of a lot more than that's very kind of it. Listen, this is your time to shine. Lee Mark Jones, just gee, Gypsy, geez, I can't even say it. I haven't had a drink yet. Gypsy Pistol Arrows, this is your time to shine. The new wow. single is The Ballad of Thomas Shelby. And yes. with a, an unnamed actor doing the intro, we're not allowed to mention. Yeah. Uh, anyway, get no. it so available. Spotify, 220,000 yeah. streams so far. 258 or no, wow. 274. 274 wow. now. Look at that. I know. Hot. But we were. We won't even get into Spotify. Let's not even go there. Oh, okay. no. Look, it, it's your day to show. <laughs> it's been an absolute pleasure talking to you, as I knew it would be. Oh, yeah. uh, this is the first yeah. of Matt's chats. We'll see where it goes. We've got Baza, Massive Wagons coming, Cassidy Paris, um, uh, Lord knows who else, Girl School, there's a few others all lamed up. Once they've seen Brilliant. this interview, they probably don't want to do it. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll have you know, I had a glass of pink gin sitting there and I haven't touched it the whole interview because I didn't want to <laughs> tempt you or show you that. 
That's the way I'm yeah, going. yeah, yeah. I was all right till I went on mass freaking chat. Yeah. And <laughs> that, Sit over now I woke up in a skip. <laughs> <laughs> that might happen yet. God bless you, Lee. Listen, you take care. You have a great evening. Thanks very much. I'll speak soon. All right. Take care. Bye bye. See you soon. Bye bye, bro. Bye bye, bye.